first steps. In this section we're going to create this simple game. The only control is the plane climbs by pressing the space bar, mouse or touch. It's similar to Flappy Bird. I recommend having a play with complete lecture 5 underscore 5 from the main index page of the resources. Once you've got a feel for the game it's time to get started on the coding. You'll be working on two files from the start lecture 5 underscore 1 folder game.js and plane.js and we'll start with game.js. Just a standard constructor we create and show a loading bar, create an instance of a 3GS clock so we can keep track of elapsed time in the game. Set the path to the assets folder, create a camera, position it to suit our game and set the direction of the camera by getting it to look at the position 006. That's 6 meters along the Z axis. We're going to play with camera movement in this video and to allow for that we create an empty object 3D and add the camera to it. We also create a target position which is also set to 006. We create a scene adding our camera controller to it. Then we create a hemisphere light. Remember that has a different shade of light for downward facing triangles and upward facing triangles. Then we create a renderer and set the set environment method to set the scene environment texture. It's important when using the GLTF loader since this uses mesh standard material and you'll find meshes look way too dark if you leave the scene environment property to the default black. We have the usual resizing event listener but I skipped over the call to load. If we slide down notice three empty methods load, load skybox and update camera. Let's start with load. Nice and simple. First we set a class property indicating that the current game state is loading and show the loading bar. Then we load the skybox and create a new instance of the plane class passing the game as a parameter to the plane constructor. We'll be looking at the plane class later. For now we'll move on to the skybox loader. The skybox is simply a cube texture, one where we set each face of the cube to a different image. We assign the texture to the scene's background property. We set the path to the images. Here they are in the plain painted sky folder in the assets folder. The first parameter to the load method for a cube texture loader takes an array of images. The order of the images is positive x axis, the image to use for the face that has a normal in line with the positive x axis then the negative x-axis followed by positive y, negative y, positive z, negative z. We add an onload event handler that just starts the render loop. We need to add some code to the render method. First we'll check if we're still loading. If we are then we check the ready flag of the plane. More about that when we look at the plane code. If the plane is ready then we set loading to false and hide the loading bar. If not then we return from the method. Assuming the plane is loaded then we call update for the plane passing the elapsed time which we get from the clock and we call update camera. Which brings us to update camera. We have two things controlling the camera positioning and direction. A controller object that is an object 3D, the camera is parented to it. Moving the controller will move the camera, but it will retain the offset position that we created it with. The dotted line on this diagram. In the code we'll move the camera controller to the plane's position, but we'll set its Y value to 0. So the plane may be above or below this object 3D. As well as the controller we have a target position, what the camera is looking at in other words and this will always be 6 units ahead of the plane. We'll move the camera controller to the plane's position but set its Y value to 0. So as the plane goes up and down the camera remains at Y equals 0. 
Looking up at the plane or down at the plane. The camera's target is again set to the plane's position, but we add 6 to the Z value. Remember we initialize the target at 006 when the plane was at 000. This simply keeps this relative positioning. And that's it for the GameGS file. Time to sort out the plane class file. In the constructor we get the assets path, loading bar and scene from the path game parameter and create a class property that's a reference to the game instance. We also create a Vector3 instance called TMP Pos. It's slightly quicker to use an existing class instance rather than always creating one on the fly. In the constructor we call the load method. More about that in a minute. First let's look at the getter and setter. We have a position getter and this will return the plane's world position. This is where we use the TMP pos vector 3 d we created in the constructor. The object 3D method get world position expects a vector 3 parameter to be passed to it and this parameter is set by the method. We return this value. The setter simply hides or shows the loaded plane object which brings us to load. At the moment we need to add code to the onload and on progress events. In the online event we add the GLTF scene to the game scene. Recall in the plane constructor we created a local reference to its scene property. Then we create a reference to the GLTF scene as the local property plane. To move the plane we have a velocity vector and we'll use this in the next stage of the game creation. We want to be able to rotate the propeller so we get a reference to it using the method get object by name. Now we can set ready to true. Remember this is used by the game to move from the loading state. There's a slight change to the on progress code. As well as directly setting the progress property, we can call the update method. This allows for multiple loading items simultaneously and you pass a name and the loaded and total properties. Later in this section we'll be loading several GLTF files and the loading bar handles the progress of multiple loaders in this way. It just remains to write the update code. Recall that this is called by the game render method. It receives an elapsed time parameter and we first rotate the propeller using the rotate Z method. The rotate Z method rotates the object around the Z axis by one radian. There are two pi radians in a revolution, so the propeller completes a revolution in about six frame updates. Since the target frames per second FPS is 60, this means the propeller rotates about 10 times a second. Now we want the plane to gently sway about the Z axis. And for this we're going to set the Z component of the rotation property. This expresses the rotation of the plane as an Euler. That is how it rotates in the X, Y and Z axes. The order of rotation is very important for Eulers and here we set the order to X, Y, Z. So it will rotate X first, then Y and then Z. Since we're only setting the Z value, for this example order isn't important, but in general order makes a huge difference for Euler rotations. For the Z value, that's how the plane banks, we'll use the math method sign, passing the time value. This will return a value that varies between 1 and minus 1, and back in roughly 6 seconds. That's too long for our purposes, so we multiply it by 3. Now the range of values cycles once every two and a bit seconds, but a range between minus one and one is too big, so we multiply this by 0.2 to get the range plus or minus 0.2, and that handles the plane's rotation. We also want the plane to bob up and down a bit, and for this we'll set the position property Y, the height of the plane. This time we'll use the cos method and multiply this by 1.5 to get values that range between minus 1.5 and 1.5. If you saved your work on the game and plane files and go to your browser 
and play lecture 5 underscore 1 start, you see the skybox we loaded and the plane bouncing up and down in the sky. Oh, no we don't. I've got a typo. Change the capital L to lowercase and save and refresh and now we have the plane bouncing up and down. A great start to the game. In the next video we're going to add some user interaction. Catch you in a minute. This video comes from my Udemy course, The Beginner's Guide to 3D Web Game Development with 3GS. Get the full course by following the link at nicklever.com forward slash courses.